Hi, I'm Dr. Magaziner, and I'm bringing to you my five-part series for how to stay well and hopefully protect you against coronavirus and the COVID-19 virus. I've previously spoken about some of the main foods that you should think about. We talked about lifestyle modifications. We talked about some of the supplements. Today, I want to talk to you about some of the intravenous nutrients and other therapies that we are doing in my practice in my office in Cherry Hill. Now, I've been using IV nutrients here for over 33 years, and we've seen some remarkable results with them. And I know that the traditional medical profession perhaps frowns upon this and is not really educated in it and probably doesn't want to hear much about it. But I want to tell you that we've treated hundreds and hundreds and probably thousands of patients over the 33 years, and we've provided over 50,000 IV treatments very safely and quite effectively. So right now, we're having a lot of people coming in because they're looking for ways of preventing the COVID virus from affecting them. And one of the things that we've been doing is offering two major forms of intravenous therapies. And I want to tell you that worldwide, these treatments are being used to help protect patients, and not only protect, some are using to treat actual coronavirus patients. Now, I'm not treating coronavirus patients in my practice. I'm sending them, if they have symptoms, to the hospital. But we are here to prevent the coronavirus from affecting our patients. And in fact, we are trying to keep our patients out of the hospital because hospital settings today is, are not the greatest place to be. And we want to protect our patients from needing to get intubated and put on a ventilator because uh, results sometimes aren't so favorable once that occurs. And there's a lot of mortality and morbidity occurring, as we all know. So one of the things that's been used in some of the other countries quite a bit is called medical grade oxygen ozone therapy. This is something very, very unique whereby a certain amount of blood, typically it's blood, is removed from the uh, patient's arm, and then it is given the oxygen into the IV bag, and then it's reinfused into the patient's arm. Sometimes it is even, we even give that, not only that, but we actually add what's called ultraviolet light to the treatment plan as well, because it helps kill some of the different viruses and bacteria. But the oxygen ozone therapy has been very effective, a point in fact in Thailand They've talked about how effective it's been in a lot of their patients to keep them out of the hospital. Um, the other therapy that we're using quite a bit of um, is called intravenous vitamin C. And you've probably heard a little bit about that. I posted on some of my uh, social media pages, my Facebook page, and some of the others. There's a lot of studies coming out on this now as to its beneficial effect in just keeping people healthier longer. And if they are in a the hospital, they're finding now that they're able to get out of the hospital quicker. They may not be on the ventilator quite as long. Their symptoms are not becoming as severe. And, you know, way back, 1970, 1975, in that range there, Dr. Linus Pauling, who's the only two-time Nobel Prize winner in the entire existence of the world, showed evidence that intravenous vitamin C could help against virtually all or most viruses. And more and more is coming out now that it may help protect us against the SARS coronavirus. So we've been using this in our practice now, um, well, since the, the occurrence of this uh, virus, but I've been using it for the last 33 plus years. And very, very effective. It's very, very safe when it's done under proper conditions. Now, we are using higher than the, the, um, the FDA doses or the, um, the typical doses. You know, you think of by mouth, maybe 100 milligrams a day according to the um, USDA guidelines and such, or RDA guidelines. But when it's given intravenously, it works quite differently, and it's actually a pro, what's called a pro-oxidant. It's not an antioxidant when it's given intravenously in high doses. And as such, it has the ability to actually oxidize and to potentially destroy some of these foreign invaders that we're um, trying to protect us against. So we're using doses here in the practice of anywhere from 15 to even up to, ready for this, 50 grams a day for our patients. So that's anywhere from 15,000 to 15 to 50,000 milligrams per day. Certainly much higher than what even some of the hospitals in this country are using because some of the countries here now some of the hospitals here in New York are using um, about one about one, one and a half grams three times a day. So they're getting about four and a half to five grams a day for some of the patients. But in other countries they're using much higher doses and we're certainly doing it in our practice to protect people against various infectious agents. So these are two of the modalities that we're combining. And actually, when we give the medical-grade ozone f an oxygen therapy first, it actually um, has a, what's called a synergistic effect, and it actually potentiates, which means it increases the effect of the vitamin C. Um, there's studies being also done now um, in Italy. There's a whole society of medical uh, oxygen therapy that's shown now 
that it's protecting some of the patients over there. Um, so I'm very excited about it. So these are two of the things that we're offering here in the practice. If you're interested in finding out more, simply call the office, send us an email, give us a phone call. We are still here. We're seeing patients. We're also doing phone appointments. But we're seeing patients, and we're making sure that our patients are socially distanced. We're keeping them separated as best we can when they're in the IV suite. We are asking them to, re to, to wear um, uh, masks, of course, wash hands, and all the things that we all should be doing right now. Make sure you're staying home as best as possible. If you run out to the doctor's office for treatment, that's fine if you are taking the proper precautions. Um, and incidentally, I've been amazed how so many of my cancer patients who I'm currently treating for cancer um, and we're supporting their immune systems, they're not getting sick, which I'm amazed because these are patients who are immunocompromised. And when they are on the program that I just mentioned here, as well as the ones I previously mentioned with, this, with the supplement plans that we're using, some of these supplements, as well as some of the IV treatments, we're finding out that these patients are keeping and staying out of the hospital. They are not getting uh, respiratory symptoms. They're not having the shortness of breath, the fevers, the coughs, and I've been very impressed. It's just an observation by me. I'm not telling you I have double-blind placebo-controlled trials to prove this, but hey, if we can keep people out of the hospital, it's going to reduce the morbidity and mortality greatly. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something. And stay well, stay safe, and tune into my next part five of my series, which will discuss some of the regenerative therapies that we've been using as well. Thank you.